came with his full glory. He come to the earth as a baby. And how long would the earth be in existence? Near in. One second. Okay. If God in his full glory came to the earth and showed his full glory, the whole earth would be blown up. Everybody would be killed. Okay, so God, Jesus, when he came to earth, he had to empty himself of the glory of God, the full shining glory of God, and become a man, and at that stage, a little baby. Because the Lord wanted to have relationship with us. And he wanted to be able to f cleanse us, a sacrifice once and for all, for all of our sins that we could ever do or think or imagine. And we don't want to imagine those things. So that we could be saved and clean. And there's that word again, unity. God united with man, like it was always supposed to be. So Jesus, he was shown by the Father and led by the Holy Spirit what to do. And I'm going to tell you five things Jesus did. And the reason is, is that we're embarking, we're doing new kinds of evangelism, and people don't understand it. But we have to do these new ways of evangelizing because today people, they have trouble listening to preachers on the, on the thing. If, uh, for example, me, the live video, even the people that go to our church that isn't able to come today, they'll only last about 10 minutes and they'll turn it off. So most everybody is not listening to this. That's why the teaching we've separated and we'll post online. I will also... Try. I should have Irene give me 10 minutes <laughs> to go over this, and I can do the 10-minute version. You want the 10-minute version? Yes. <laughs> yes. See what I mean? Nobody wants the long version. Okay, so Jesus, he modeled for us how to do the works and how to share Jesus, what God is all about. And we need to do that. So how will we... Share, well, God is given this church a lot of creativity. I write a lot of songs, but everybody in the church can write songs. They just don't have the confidence, okay? So you just start writing down words, and you say, Ken, help me to put together a song, and then we'll sing it. And then all of a sudden, you're a songwriter. It's that easy. Okay, uh, number two, everybody can give seven words of healing and pray and intercede to do a healing service. Everybody can do that. Okay, so if Blen wasn't here, is it okay if I'll call you Blen? Yes, Pastor. <laughs> okay. Remember, Blen is like Billy Graham. Do you know who Billy Graham is? Yes, no, the greatest evangelist. Where he can speak. In stadiums with thousands and thousands and thousands of people will come to the Lord. Mm -hmm. so, oh, the Billy Graham who yeah. preached the, yung 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 reject ng isang yeah. American, yeah. who rejected the American art art yeah. actress. Blen has that gift. So when I call you Blen, is it Blaine. is it an is it a co compliment or an insult? Compliment. It's a compliment, Pastor. Yeah. Great so compliments. That means. That you have that gift. Amen. Okay, but if if uh, Blen wasn't here, then Jonah would have came up, and she would have done seven words, right? Right, Jonah. Okay, and if Jonah wasn't here, then uh, Lorena would come up, and she would do the seven words, and then all heaven would break open. Because when Lorena starts becoming like Billy Graham, the whole world will be saved. Is that true or false? True. It's true. Okay? Now, Irene, why didn't Irene come up and did the seven words? Well, because she wants you to grow and develop because she has done it before. 
She has spoken in Indonesia and saw that premature baby's heart through her prayers healed. Right, Irene? She has spoken to ladies and given them a Bible verse and a prophecy and they think she's the great woman of God. The little teens she spoke to. And is she a great woman of God? Amen. Yes. Okay. So, five things that Jesus did. And why? Because we need to learn to do those things. Okay? So, one of the things Jesus did is he taught stories. Okay? So, I was telling Blen earlier... Maybe I should call you Blenna. No, I don't. I, don't know. I was telling Len earlier that what do people do at night after work? They go to Facebook. They check their messages. So they're reading a short message. It's a dialogue where people are hearing a story and telling back a story. Okay. They are um, watching a video, maybe a video that tells a meaning or something, listening to music, okay? So everything that people do, the only way we're going to be able to communicate is to do what they do, where you have a personal story you share. Um, Jesus touched me today where I felt warm and peaceful when I took a deep breath. One, two, three. And... I stopped worrying about some stuff. It, I, I know I need to do it, but it doesn't bother me as much. I'm, I'm going to be okay. You're, and my, the, the situation is going to be okay. Okay, so Jesus told stories to people. Like one of the stories he told was the hidden treasure. Matthew thirteen forty four, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. Man found it, and he concealed it. He hid it. Then, in his joy, he went and sold all that he had, and he bought the field so that he could get the treasure. Okay? So, for example, in the Philippines, people who live in the provinces, they have what? A farm field. Okay? So, let's say Rodrigo... And what's Rodrigo's brother? His name? Douglas. Douglas. Okay, so you have Rodrigo and Douglas. And Rodrigo has a farm field and a piggery. And Douglas has a farm field and a chicken farm. Okay? Local chickens. So, um, Rodrigo tells Douglas, I know you need a little money. Um, I want to buy your field. And Douglas says, well, why did you sell your piggery? Well, I don't really need it. I just want to have a farm field. And can I buy that field from you? Okay, I need some extra money. You're my brother. I love you. So he buys the farm field. And then Rodrigo does what? He goes and he... He digs up the treasure, and in the field was all this gold and everything. So, of course, Rodrigo and Douglas would fight over that. But if, you, if it wasn't your brother, you didn't know who it was, Jesus told this story because back then they had farm fields. And Jesus said, in your farm field, you will find the kingdom of heaven. It's like a treasure in your field and you'll sell everything to have that treasure, to have Amen. the best, okay? So Jesus would tell a story and people wouldn't completely understand it, but they wouldn't think he was talking in some unknown language. You will give up everything for something you cannot taste, touch, feel, okay? Would they understand him at all? No, not no. at that time. The people understood common language, corn, rice, animals. 
They didn't understand Greek terms that came later into the church of pathos, ethos. They didn't understand that. So Jesus talked to them in ways that they could understand. So today, when we want to reach people, we want to tell them about God in ways they can understand. So if you pray for somebody, don't pray a lot of words. Declare healing and say, receive Holy Spirit. One, two, three, refresh. And then let God touch a person. Okay? If you want to teach them about the Bible, give them some things they can learn. For example, we have a card here. Did you give me my magnifying glass, Irene? Okay, come up and say, read it. We have a card here. You can give somebody a card and say, I just pulled this out of my hand. I don't, it's not for you. It just came out of my hand like magic. But it's not magic. It's God speaking to you right now. So, this one is for Sally. Sally is probably watching us right now. What is this message of God for Sally right now? Finally, be strong in the Lord and, and in His mighty power. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. What's the Bible verse? Ephesians 6.10. 6, I think Pastor Irene's hungry and is eating <laughs> sunflower seeds. <laughs> Is that a will of the Lord? Right, just, just eating chocolate. Oh, I don't think you're allowed to eat. Well, we're, we're just having a friendly Bible study. Okay, so that's number one. He told stories. Number two, John 5, 17 through 30. Jesus only did what the Father in heaven showed him to do. Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Okay, then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in this matter. The father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does and he will show him greater works than these, that you may be amazed. Okay? For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. In John, a little bit later, in the 17th, 14th through the 17th chapter, Jesus said, I have shown you the Father. Father. Now, the Father's plan, the Father's good and perfect will, He shows us so we can also do what? What? Father's will. Do what the Father's doing. Okay, so the ministry that you do is you can go over to Admiralty after the pandemic and see hundreds and hundreds of ladies, and you can say, Lord... Show me the one you want me to talk to. And if you are really obedient to the Lord, how many people is he going to show you to talk to in 30 minutes? He could show you to talk to 30 people in 30 minutes. Where you walk, give him a message or a book, and say, I just, the Lord just put you on my heart. It doesn't have to be where you only see one. One time I was at a meeting and we had a few Chinese people with us and we sent out messages from God when we were walking around the street to like 30 people. And everybody else was in McDonald's looking for somebody with a purple shirt and didn't, didn't talk to one person in 30 minutes. So depending on your faith level and your ability to do what Father's doing, you'll be, you can minister to a lot of people in a short time, or you can minister to one person in, an, in 30 minutes. Because the Father shows you what to do, right? But don't always spend 30 minutes with one person because maybe the person will speak so many negative words. Will you be able to lift them up or will they lift you down? Lift them up. No, you will, they will lift you down. 
So you talk for a little bit, and then if the father says you're done, then you say, here's my phone number. Let's communicate. See you later. Okay? Okay. So that's number two. We only do what the father shows us to do. Okay? Now, the next one. Matthew 6. Jesus actually gave little teachings, sermons. Okay? So... In Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and also in Luke, they call it the Sermon on the Mount. And this is a sermon, and Jesus even talked about, don't judge somebody else and take you take, until you take the stick out of your own eye. He even made a little joke. So Jesus was a little funny, okay? But in verse 1 of Matthew 6, this is part of his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, be careful. i got to adjust my leg because it's hurting. Let me move this the sock really quick. With the piano, I can't have my leg extended. Okay, so I'll take this out. Okay, he says, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have a no reward from your Father in heaven. Okay, so Jesus spoke directly sometimes to people. And he said, you know, don't show that you're righteous. Because our righteous to God, uh, some people even interpret it, is like menstruation cloths. Okay? Um, our righteousness, when we try to show we're good, we're this, we're that, it's just fake. But when we do what the Father's doing, and refresh in the Lord, then we become true, and He can fully receive our glory and love and worship as we share beautifully and powerfully with many others around us. Why do we minister and try to tell people about Jesus? Because Jesus had compassion for people. He was moved by compassion. It's all about helping others to come to the Lord to not suffer so much. We're not talking about eternal damnation. We're talking about why are they crying and suffering and even trying to self-hurt themselves. How many of you have friends that are actually cutting themselves right now? The Lord wants to stop it. And he needs somebody to be bold to go and declare a change. Amen. Okay. So let me go to the scripture where it says Jesus had compassion. By the way, the short shortest way scripture in the in the Bible is Jesus wept. And he wept because he had compassion. This is uh, Matthew 9:36 when he saw the crowds he was moved with compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. You only do ministry because you see the pain that's going on and the Lord speaks to you and shows you to encourage them. But sometimes you come in and you say, Hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. And I just had an angelic vision from God for your life. And you tell them, and they start crying. What are you, witch? Then you say, come Holy Spirit. And they start feeling warm. And they cry even more and start shaking. What are you, a witch? No, the Lord Jesus is real. You've heard about him. Remember the guy on the cross? He's real, and you have an encounter with him. He's going to change your life and help you through every difficulty and get you home someday with everything you could ever imagine and love. Okay. Last point. What? The sermon's over already? I don't remember the other four points. So let's, <laughs> let's re review. What was the first point? The first point was... Jesus told the story. Jesus told stories. 
that people could understand, okay? Now, I use paintings, and I, when I was singing on the street in Mong Kok for seven years, we would give out paintings so that people would think, because they were so different. So if you look around at the paintings that I paint, they're really different and hard to understand and very simple and childlike. We gave them away to thousands of people, pictures, to get them to think and to give them a message of God's love. Come to the Lord as a child. Okay, what's number two? We only do what fathers want to do. What, what Father God wants us to do. Now, is Father close or far away? Close. He's close. Okay, quickly, have a contest with Father God. Touch your nose and versus God touching your nose. Who's going to win? On your mark, get set, go. Okay, who touched your, no your nose first? Jesus. Father God. Did. Father God first. He touched you first. He's faster than He's you. He's faster, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, next one. Pastors, do not show other people your perfection. Sorry. Okay, no, he just taught. He directly taught the Bible, what it meant. Yeah, yeah. Sermon of Mount, as best as he could. But in a way that people could understand. Okay, four, he had come passion. Compassion. He had compassion. That's, That's what ministry is. Others. You look at people and you say, I need to have compassion for them. Uh, I wrote a song a few years, a few months ago. Lord, bring your Facebook lovers to Jesus. Okay. And after that, the Lord gave me compassion to send Christmas gifts to a Facebook lover. And maybe he'll know the love of God. Okay, but until I wrote that song, Bring Your Facebook Lovers to Jesus, did I have any compassion? No. I was just worried about the girl. But now the Lord's giving me more compassion for Facebook lovers. Is that good or bad? It's good, it's good because it's good. both of them, whether they be real or mm -hmm. fake, they still need Jesus. Okay, and the last one is, how do you get all that you need to be able to minister? There's another scripture I didn't find, but Jesus started healing everybody in an area. He, somebody didn't come up to him. Oh, I'm sorry, Len. I'm done for the day. But when my mother was healed of ovarian cancer and was had her surgery, hysterectomy, and was dying, she went to the church to get healed, a big TV station, and they said, sorry, the healing's done for the day. Come back next week. <laughs> and she said, oh, I guess I'm going to die. And then somebody came up to her and said, they're starting the healing service again. Get in line. You're next. And the Lord healed her over an eight-week period. All the tumors shrunk into nothing. Amen. And she's still alive today. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, she was in Hong Kong and speaking to 35,000 El Shaddai Catholics, telling wow. the healing story. And they said, we've never seen somebody tell us a healing like that. Your impact is huge. You don't realize it. Mm -hmm. If you wait and say, God, show me what to do, you'll keep doing it until... You're speaking to 35,000 people or more. Matthew 4, 1 through 11 is where Jesus is being tempted by Satan. So he used the word of the Lord on the last temptation. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. And then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. After 40 days of fasting, the angels came and ministered to him. So when the angels would come, they would refresh him, strengthen him, get him ready for the next things. 
which was the beginning of his ministry. Amen. Okay. Another scripture. Luke 6.12. Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. There's another place where it's he's having these encounters with the Father, encounters with the Holy Spirit, the angels ministering to him and strengthening while he's praying. Okay? There was a young man who committed suicide a few weeks ago at the building next door. Um, and I was awake when it happened. And I was watching Jesus walk by at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, wow, Lord, you were walking by to rescue that man and to rescue his wife in such a bad situation. See, when you are praying at times and awake and watching things, the Lord shows you things and the Lord refreshes you, strengthens you. So, if you have to get up at 5 o'clock and take care of the children in the morning and all of that, should you be up at 3 o'clock praying? Yes or no? No. no, you should go to sleep. You should rest. But sometimes, there are times when the Lord will speak to you late at night as you're praying and being available. Okay? You don't do it all the time. Sometimes. Me, I don't usually stay up till 3 o'clock, but if I'm up till 3, I can see Jesus walk around and like a father... Make sure everybody's in bed. And make sure peace is checking in the place. Everything. Checking everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? So those are five things. Jesus showed people the Father because he did only what the Father was doing. He had compassion on people. That was his ministry. That's why he did what he did because the Father had compassion on people. He refreshed after work, going and relaxing. Now, how many of you, if you're in the Philippines, you, you and your husband or boyfriend or friends, you after work, you go refresh by having a, a drink. The famous man of God said, I would come in for my drink, and the Lord said, why don't you refresh with... The Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Be not drunk with wine, but be yeah. filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, filling, it's not always there. We are have the Holy Spirit with us all the time, but we don't always feel the Holy Spirit with us. We have to count our blessings because we don't know and remember God's with us because the enemy is hitting us so hard. So that's why we do this thing where you say one, two, three, refresh. Let's do it again. One, two, three, one, two, three, we, we refresh in the Holy Spirit. Now when you do that, you'll notice that your whole thought process and everything changes. You'll start to relax and you say, Lord, help me to refresh in you. And to know what to do. So every day in the morning when I send you something, it's because I'm saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I'm refreshing. Show me. And then he shows me different things to do. He will do that with you. That's why we want you to create blogs and start doing your blog and sending it to your friends. And make that your head ministry headquarter archive of what God's speaking to you. You can go back and start seeing what's going on. You can still post on Facebook and everything, but this is your own archive. Whereas Facebook, it's hard to say, oh, go to September 20th, 20, 20, uh, 2014. It's hard. They'd have to look it up. Hopefully it's still there. It's hard. But when you're in it, when it's your own archive, it's right there. And you can do it on your phone, so we can show you how to do that. Jesus taught the Word of God, even taught the devil the Word of God. Worship the Lord your God only. Okay? And last, he told stories to help people know what God's ways are like. He told stories. So what are we going to do? Today, after lunch, if you're bored, we have 
225 crosses and we need to put them on little on little cords for necklaces and we have some cords we can cut and we also have some beads that we can put on some of them make them beautiful these are your works of art you can take them to share um, but also uh, we around Easter time or the next few months we can actually invite people to come get a free cross, a free Bible, and to receive God's love for their life and healing power. A special anointed cross for healing. So we can do that. Okay? So, paintings, songs, hearing from the Lord, what the Father is doing, praying for healing, short prayers where you say, Come Holy Spirit, come. You wait, and then you watch the person with your eyes open, see God start to touch them. They'll start to relax. Maybe they'll shake a little bit. Maybe they'll take deep breaths and just look at peace. And then you declare that healing over them. And after that, you ask them, stretch, move. How does it feel? Tell them, check with the doctor, see what they say. Tell them, you listen to the doctor, but if they give you bad news, don't believe the bad news. Just say, thank you, Lord. This is what the doctor says. You're going to do better. You're going to help me overcome. So, voila. That's the message. And now, think about it. Think about it. We had this incredible healing. We had many people we've talked to. We had a new leader emerge that they can do the work of the kingdom. And it's only 2.45. And we didn't start until what time? 12. 12.30. Or later. 12.40. Okay, so if you do church service under two and a half hours, we are still beating the home mother church in Paranaki. Because they're usually two and a half hours, right? So did we do that? Did we win? Yes. yes. Did you did you leave learning something? Did you leave yes. learning something? Yes. Okay, let's sing a closing song and then Irene come up and pray. Amen.